What's up, nerds? Paul Conti here for yet another take on uh, attempting to record this particular video, which I keep stumbling all over for no apparent reason. But anyway, apparently I have the math skills of Big Shack, so we are going to try and move along through this. We're going to talk about rolling on 2d6, which is most commonly charging and casting. So, without further ado, both of those things generally happen on two six-sided dice. Uh, there's a lot of buffs and debuffs available, and they're getting more and more common with new book releases, and with the addition of new spell lores in new books that come out, it's increasingly common that you see lots of spells flying around the table. Zinch does it all the time. Nurgle's going to be doing it all the time. Um, I suspect when we get um, the re-release of the Death Battle Tome with the Legions of Nagash, that's going to be very magic heavy as well. So lots of options here. We're going to be having tons of spells flying around. And it's important to understand what's going on. And of course, charging is a thing that happens pretty much every game. Unless you're playing Vanguard Wing, then nobody ever charges, and you just have lots of combats and people die. The probability distribution. This is very important to understand. Rolling on 2d6, your most common outcome is a 7, with 6 possible results on those two six-sided dice that can result in a six. I'm sorry, with a seven. And going away from that midpoint of seven, you have a diminishing number of outcomes for each different possibility. Now, across the bottom here, I've done a little math just for the odds of rolling that value or greater on 2d6. So for example, rolling a five or better on 2d6 is 83.3%. Rolling a 10 is 16.7%. And you can see the probability distribution sort of visualized down below that. So that gives you a bit of a visual representation for the more uh, visual learners in the audience how all of this actually works. So the interesting thing is that when you are buffing either charges or casting or anything on 2d6, you actually have diminishing returns. So increasing your seven up to a six up to cast is a 24% increase. Increasing from a six to a five is only a 15% increase in your overall odds to cast. Uh, if we take it all the way out to the very extreme rolling a 12, there's only one option uh, that will result in a 12. That's two sixes. However, if you can move from a 12 to an 11, there's two options that are available to roll an 11 and one option to roll a 12. So if you go from a 12 to an 11 or better, you're actually tripling your odds of success. So as we go down, your buffs have diminishing returns over your... Uh, different either casting values or charge distances. And really the opposite is also true of debuffs is that you have increasing returns when you are debuffing these things. So being able to stack debuffs is incredibly powerful if you're reducing movement or reducing casting values, or I'm sorry, increasing casting values. Um, that's really powerful. Not a lot of those things exist right now. Uh, Nurgle has some. I'm sure a few others exist. Rerolls are very powerful as they are in uh, you know your basic roll of 1d6. 
Um, so just to kind of look really quickly at the math of what a reroll actually does, it is your odds of success plus your odds of failure times your odds of success. So for example, a roll of seven or better is a 58.3% chance. So if you get a re-roll on that, you have a 41.7% chance of failure times the 58.3% chance of success. And then we add that to the 58.3% chance of initial success for an 82.6% success rate for seven plus with a re-roll. Very, very powerful ability. Let's just look at, at some examples. Two different things that I've been looking at specifically um, with Stormcast. Um, typically things come in, uh, if they're doing some sort of deep strike move, they have to come in nine inches or more away from an enemy unit. Now a nine inch charge has a 27.8% chance of success. So there's really pretty good reason that GW set that at nine inches. It's about one in four that that's actually going to work. Now, if you use our buddy Gabriel Sherhart to increase that plus three, it increases your odds of success to 72.2%. So it's almost tripling your odds of success by adding that plus three, bringing it from a nine to a six. You can also add a Knight Vexilor, giving you a reroll, bringing you to a 92.3% chance of success. If you've got Gavriel also in play after a teleport to nine inches away from the enemy. Hint, hint, guys, this is the replacement list that I am pondering for the inevitable loss of Vanguard Wing. I'm not exactly sure how they are going to be debuffing Vanguard Wing through an errata, but I'm assuming that whatever it is, we're probably going to have to actually charge into combat, and it's probably going to be from nine inches away. Um, even if it's not, if it's something even worse, even like really severely debuffing your um, Vanguard Wing Battalion and now we basically have to always use uh, the nine inches away plus some other restriction from Vanguard Wing that basically would make it unusable. Um, your Knight Vexilor and your Lightning Chariot let you teleport guys to with nine inches away from the enemy. So adding Gavriel and the Knight Vexilor nearby gives you that nice 92.3% chance of success of teleporting whatever unit it is uh, into place and then charging into combat successfully. So. 92.3% uh, odds, those I will gladly take any day of the week. So, uh, casting values is something that I've also been sort of playing around with because uh, it's possible in the Nurgle book to actually get multiple plus ones to cast. So, you could take a great unclean one who can give himself plus one to cast by stabbing himself and taking a mortal wound. Uh, and then you can also put an artifact on him that gives him plus one to cast. Alternatively, you can use the plus one to cast artifact in conjunction with a Bailwind Vortex, which is uh, another powerful ability to uh, have hanging around. So the question is, how much do you really want that plus two to cast versus just one, plus one to cast? Is it really that valuable? Um, the jury is still sort of out for me. The seven plus casting is at 58%, so roughly three fifths. Uh, adding plus one to that gets you to about three quarters of the time and doing it 
plus two gets you to 83.3 percent which is actually five sixths which is the same as rolling a two plus on 1d6 so that makes things very interesting lots of things in the nurgle book cast on sevens um, a few things cast on even less than that and so there's definitely some question for me of whether or not we are going to be throwing that artifact onto a great unclean one or if we are going to throw that artifact onto uh your herald of nurgle and then throw him up on a bailwind vortex um or neither or just kind of roll with what we've got um uh, or you know just let the uh, Great Unclean one have the plus one to his casting and then throw the artifact on uh, some other wizard and not bother with a Bailwind Vortex. That's really sort of the question that I've been bouncing around in my head, but these are the sorts of things that you can think about with uh, this sort of math available to you. Um, I think this is increasingly going to be important and it's kind of uh remiss of me to not have really looked at the 2d6 math before now since that's always been charge math it's always been casting math um but now as it becomes more and more important those things really are coming to the forefront that we needed to have a little conversation about them so with that said, um, that's just going to arm you with a little bit more math to plan out your lists, plan out what you're doing, and hopefully win that game before you actually get the table. Um, as uh, you know, Sun Tzu said, and I'm probably paraphrasing, that uh, defeated warriors go to battle and seek to win, and victorious warriors win first and then go to battle so win that game before you get to the table kids know your math know your odds know it before you do it good luck to all of you